1987 was a very unique year for me because that was the year when I came in contact with the angel Gabriel. You read about angels in the Bible and you hear people talk about angels. But when you come face to face with one, then you really realize that the experience is far beyond anything you could ever imagine. It was not a night when anything spectacular happened. I went to church this Sunday. And that Sunday when I went to church, there was nothing spectacular that happened at the church this Sunday. It was just an ordinary day. There was nothing spectacular about the weather. Nothing spectacular about the service. I had no form of inclination that something so big was going to happen. And maybe that is one of the reasons why it was so explosive. The whole unexpectation and also the suddenness. How it happened just like that. Just bang! I was going through a very difficult time. It's the first time I had ever been close to a nervous breakdown. When I read in the Bible about how shocked people can be, you cannot really get the perception until it happens to you. That Sunday, I went to church in the morning, then went back in the night and went home, had supper, went to bed. Out of nowhere, I was asleep. While I was asleep, I was, um, I don't know what time I went to bed, maybe midnight. But about 4 o'clock, I woke up and I saw this very tall, white gentleman standing over my bed. Standing towards the foot of my bed. He was so tall. I don't know. I don't know how tall that ceiling is. Maybe it was an 8 foot ceiling. I don't know. But his head was almost touching the ceiling. He was robed in this white robe. He had long hair. It's amazing the things I could see. The lights were off, but I saw it so clearly. He was there, his, he, his face was very thin and long. And when I woke up and I was afraid and I shouted and I, I said, Oh! I just shouted. I shouted and I shouted loudly. And when I shouted, immediately he said to me, don't be afraid. And I mean, it's amazing. The kind of fear I felt, it's not a fear that I was afraid of him. It was a fear as though this person I was looking at had so much authority. The fear I felt was a, a dread uh, of someone who someone who had a lot of authority. He said to me, don't be afraid. The Lord has sent me to strengthen you. And as soon as he said that, it was like a flash. His hand just came from under this huge sleeve and like whoosh. And just, he just held his hand over my head like this. 
honestly, I, I have to say that I didn't feel anything, but I just heard something going, Psst. I didn't feel anything inside my head, but I heard the sound. And he just disappeared. What I know is that the way the angel left was as unique as everything he said and everything he did. Because he just faded he said to me something to me which was non-verbal because the way he, 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 he disappeared it's as though he faded but he was still there that's, that's, that's the feeling I got as though he didn't go away he faded back into his invisible state that's how it felt this thing happened to me so fast, and I wanted to ask him a few things. I wanted to ask him about my future, like where my life was going to go. I had so many questions, but he was good. I wanted to ask him about my father who had died. And I sat up on the bed about 20 minutes looking to see if he would come back, and I could ask him a all these questions, but he was gone. He was gone. And from that time, from that day, you can never do me anything to make me depressed again. Totally 100% cured. Totally, 100% cure. And not only that, I found that since that day, I think my IQ level increased. I think I was not just healed of the emotional, but I think my IQ level increased because some things that I can retain some things that I can memorize, things that I come to know afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't do it before. In 2005, when I was finishing up Breakthrough Prayer, I could not finish that book without writing something about it. I, I, I just wrote a short copy of it, maybe one page about the experience. But that was the time I really wept. Um, um, I found that after that experience, also that I had not only that my IQ improved, but I started actually having visions of things which were going to happen. Like, for example, one of the visions I had was <laughs> of Princess Diana's death. I knew she was going to die. And I knew it was going to be a car accident. And that vision, and she died within 24 hours. The next vision I had after the Gabriel experience, I mean, it's so many, but the ones that are prominent I can tell you about. Next one I can tell you about a vision I had was with the Egypt Air. The Egypt Air, the, the plane that crashed in the sea. I saw the whole thing before it happened. Everything. I knew it was good that, that the plane was going to crash. I told people about it before it happened. I saw everything. And I knew it was going to be a suicide. Yeah, also another outstanding one that I saw very clearly was the death of John F. Kennedy Jr. I knew John F. Kennedy was going to die. 
So that's my experience. Can't forget that night.